we have a VPN connection where we can reach internal resources. The next question is, can we reach internet? The answer is no. I will start a continuous ping to 8888, which is the Google DNS on the internet. And as you can see, we cannot reach that resource. We cannot ping. The reason for that is that we have missed something in the NAT configuration, or we are not finished with the NAT configuration to allow outbound internet access for the clients. If we look at the VPN client, we will see that we have a full tunnel. Under statistics, we will see that we tunnel all traffic. That means that even traffic from our VPN client that goes out to internet is sent into the VPN tunnel. We will source all internet traffic from our client from the firewall. In later video, we will look at something called split tunnel. For now, we tunnel all traffic. We can do that to make sure that we source our VPN clients' internet traffic from the firewall to filter what internet resources they should have access to. Right now, they cannot reach anything on internet because of NAT. And I will show you what's missing. This is the current NAT configuration. We have an object NAT for inside network that hides outbound traffic behind the interface address on the outside. We also have a NAT configuration that makes an exemption for NAT between the inside network and VPN clients. Since our VPN clients comes from a private IP, 10.0.99, out on the internet, we need to do a hide NAT for them as well. We need to create another object NAT for the VPN clients. We already have an object for the VPN clients. Let's have a look at that. We have the VPN clients object. We use that one to do an object NAT. Object network. VPN clients, we do a NAT. And the thing is here that we need to first specify the source interface for VPN clients out on the internet. They are on the outside. This can look a bit strange, but this is the way we do it. NAT from outside, traffic going to outside, dynamic interface. Look at the NAT configuration. We had this before, and we now added this object NAT from outside to outside for the object VPN client. It should be dynamically natted and hidden behind the interface address of the outside interface. After doing that, there is one more thing to do. Since we are coming in on one interface with a security level, going out on the same interface again with the same security level, we need to add the command same security traffic permit intra interface. Traffic can be hairpinned and turned back on the same interface again. We also make sure that we have the other command inter not because it's needed now, but because it's good to make sure that two different interfaces with the same security level can communicate with each other. After doing that, we do a clear exlate because we have made changes of the NAT configuration and we will change back to our Windows machine to see if the ping is working. As we can see, we suddenly have internet access. Now we can turn traffic on the outside interface to go back out again unencrypted. Traffic, our pings from our client goes encrypted to the firewall outside interface and it is hide natted and goes unencrypted out to Google. The reply comes back to the firewall interface IP address as the destination IP and it gets unnatted and sends encrypted back into the VPN tunnel to the VPN client. Now we have internet access for our VPN client through the tunnel since we have a full tunnel.